folks, good afternoon. I hope you're all doing well. This is Mara Latori from The Funky Spork, and we are spending a beautiful, beautiful Tuesday afternoon here in Sefner, Florida, and I am here with my friend, Sean Steed, who is here from the University of Florida Institute for Agricultural Sciences. So um, we're gonna spend a few minutes chatting about Sean and some of the incredible work he's doing in local food systems as well as with UF. So first and foremost, Sean, first, thank you so much for being here and spending time with us today. You're so, you know, before we talk about UF and the extension, tell us a little bit about yourself and some of your background and kind of how you got into this field of work. Okay. Well, I got a degree in horticulture okay. in college, and uh, I always like being outside, love science, and uh, just kind of melded all that, those likes into like a horticultural sure. field. And um, when I looked through course catalogs, you know, I started looking at all the classes and, you know, horticulture kind of seemed to float to the top. Okay. And uh, got a bachelor's and then went on and got a, um, a graduate degree, master's. Okay. And then went to work in the industry. Okay, gotcha. Growing uh, plants for Speedling, one of the largest uh, transplant producers in the world. Oh, okay. Then went to uh, propagation. Okay. Worked at um, Cherry Lake Tree Farm doing tree liners, which are small trees okay. uh, for the tree industry and uh, on site production. And then I started doing my own propagation. Okay. And then I uh, started doing my own farming from there. I just had a passion for growing things. So just one, so really just kind of started from this passion you had, once again, just kind of getting your hands dirty, really, just really, getting yeah. immersed in that soil. and Yeah, just love being outside, loved outdoors, loved nature, yeah. loved science, and then it all, it all can, kind of came together, did a lot of prayer and, um, you know, trying to search my way through sure. things, and, and horticulture seemed to have the answers, and I do feel like it's a calling, and it's, it's oh, kind of like that. Absolutely. There's it definitely sounds like also there's some of that alignment that kind of comes into really finding those passions and finding a vocation that aligns with that. So with that being said, one of the hats you wear is here with the University of Florida. So first of all, can you tell us more about this division of the University of Florida and what you're doing? Yeah, so so extension, it's a cooperative extension. It's um it's a cooperation between local government, county, the Hillsborough okay. County government, and the University of Florida. Okay. And each county in, uh, in Florida has an extension office. Oh, okay. Some have multiple extension offices. Okay. And our, we are tasked with bringing science information to the general public okay. at, a, at a local level. Gotcha. That's what, that's in a nutshell, that's what extension is. Sure. So we're public servants and we work in a variety of different areas and we bring research from the University of Florida gotcha. to local. Wow. So so generally if you're a faculty at the University of Florida, there's a you either you're either teaching, research or extension. Oh, okay. You have an appointment. Uh, oh, okay. One of those three or or either one of those three or a part of Maybe one a hybrid, of those three. okay. So and and then extension is delivering that information to local clients. We're also a bridge for the researchers. So we okay. see problems at the local level and we say, we need answers to this problem. Right. Um, there may not be information there. So we would bring that up to researchers at the University of Florida okay. or beyond. And right. then they would help try to find those answers to deliver back to local Florida. Wow, that's incredible. And i just imagining how big Florida is mm -hmm. and just thinking about the breadth that all the different divisions are doing throughout each county. Now, I know that, um, you know, being here in Hillsborough County, we have, from what I know so far, an office in Plant City, but then we have this location in Sefner. So can you tell me, what is uh, Sefner focused on? Mm -hmm. Well, Sefner is our is our main office location. Okay. And we kind of radiate out from there. I see. We have different footprints in the University of Florida. We also have the Gulf Coast Research and Education Center okay. in Balm, which, which also has that three-part mission. Yeah. And um, but they're more more focused on the research areas. Okay. And they specialize vegetables, um, strawberries is another one. Okay. Uh, they specialize in entomology, nematology. Sure. Um, and then we partner with them to deliver that information to local local growers, sure. local community. We also have a tropical research um, aquaculture lab in Sun City, 
And we have a oh, wow. branch campus in Plant City, which is a part of the Gulf Coast Research Education Center. Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. So tell me, what what are you doing specifically? Okay. I work with ornamental plant production. Sure. Um, so I work with the nursery growers, the land, uh, the uh, tree growers, greenhouse growers, sod farmers, sure. environmental work production within our county. I'm also a multi-county agent, so I also do Polk County as Oh, well. okay. So I work out of the Bartow office. Uh, okay, that's wonderful. the Polk County Extension right, office. Right, right. And uh, deliver information to the growers in both counties. Okay, wonderful. Wonderful. So what are some um, current projects that you are currently working on? Mm -hmm. One of the one of the things that we've worked on the last few years is uh, working with tropical plants. We have some tropical plant producers locally, and they were trying to control weeds in their containers. Okay. So a lot of labor is expended trying to pull weeds out of containers, and when you've got acres of plants, it, it's a lot of money. Oh, sure. Very so they try to use pre-emergent herbicides, where you can put it over the top of the plants, and it'll keep all the weeds down yeah. for multiple months. And it saves a ton of money and labor. Yeah. So there was no good information at the local level or at the university level on pre-emergent herbicides for tropical plants. So that was one of those local needs that we brought up to the uh, researchers uh, at the Gulf Coast Research sure. Education Center. We got a grant. We looked at um, putting out a bunch of different trials, and we found some uh, good pre-emergent herbicides for um, them to use locally. Wow. And that information can go, you know, throughout the state of Florida. Um, it'll be presented at the Weed Science Society of America. So that's that's a local need that we were able to get funding for Absolutely. and deliver that information to other tropical growers. So now we're saving local growers money yes. and time and helping them be more efficient and hopefully save money and, and create a better community. And that's, and that's, yeah. that's the essence of extension, basically. That's wonderful. I, you know, when you were telling me that story, I was thinking one thing that kind of came to mind is like the economic impact that even that sole research project has, especially if I'm thinking maybe local nurseries or even more commercialized, with some of these research methodologies, what you're going to wind up doing, just saving a lot of these growers money, which will then help to circulate within our local and statewide economy is just absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. So I think just another thing um, that just kind of comes to mind is from what you've described, really the extension serves as like a really a forefront of some of the research and integrative work you're doing as a um, really like a public service entity so for just the everyday citizen um, or resident of Hillsborough County that may be driving up and down 579 and they may be scratching their heads and curious you know I guess this is kind of like a two-part question what ways do you um, just kind of do regular interface to just the day-to-day -day resident and citizen um, like, what are some of the things that you're doing um, as far as um... Yeah, so so not myself, but other sure. other my colleagues, um, we work on home landscapes. Oh, So, great. for instance, you're trying to figure out what is the best lawn to put down. Sure. What are some fruit trees I can plant? What's the best time to plant certain things for my garden? Right. Um, how do I keep my azaleas looking good? How yeah. do I get my roses? You know, those kind of right. questions. We have people that deal with those kinds of things. Okay. We test soil. At, oh, great. Um, if you have a garden, you don't know where your pH is oh, or the nutrients, you can bring that in. We can test your soil. Um, you know, and that that can save you money, sure. can save you time. Yeah. It can increase the home value of your of your property. Of that. Yeah. So all those things, uh, we provide answers to that to help you with that. Uh, we help landscapers. Uh, if they have a landscape operation, yeah. one of my colleagues deals specifically with landscapers. Sure. So you might have problems at your home, but a landscaper might have problems at your home with a plant. Oh, good or, point. or a commercial landscape. How do I sure. you know, put in the best thought? How do I maintain it? How much do I fertilize? We help with um, regulation in terms of licensing people to apply fertilizers. Oh, great. To do sprays, um, yeah. pesticide, yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, we have people that work on your personal finance, if you want to save money, really? if you want to do your taxes. We have people that assist you with that kind of information right here. Wow. We have cooking classes, we have nutrition classes. Um, if you're a farmer, we have, um, we're really well suited to meet the needs of wow. agriculture. Um, but we do, we do a, a, a lot. We have 4-H programs, which is our youth really? programs. So kids that want to learn how to grow things want to learn how to take care of animals if they want to go into farming sure. or if they want to go into 
shooting sports, archery, uh, soccer, those kinds of things. It's all about leadership development and empowering youth to do the best they can through the University of Florida's youth program. It's called 4-H. Wow. This is almost like a library. This is. This is incredible. I didn't realize all those incredible services are happening specifically here in this office, and I would even argue other offices. This is incredible. So, so maybe an everyday resident, and it sounds almost like kind of connecting what some of the work you do to horticulture. And I would even just kind of connect it to food because I am a food blogger, and I'm always interested to see like how does all this tie with food, and you know how how does everything kind of intertwine. Maybe I don't have the best gardening skills, which I don't. I'm working on it. And my soil right now, I will tell you, in my tiny window garden in my apartment, it was, I had some peppers, but now those peppers are starting to turn white. If I wanted to, someone like myself or any other kind of novice gardener or someone that wants to plant, could we hypothetically bring in a sample of that soil or even our potted plant for some of you folks to kind of assess to see what we're doing wrong? That's as our public servant, yeah. um, you know, that's that's one of the things we do. Wow. Uh, we have a mas master gardeners, which is our, our volunteer core of okay. extension. They come in, they get trained, they have some intensive training. Sure. And then they go out to help us with our mission in the county. Okay. And we have a master gardener coordinator. Sure. But one of those things is a help desk. And you can bring in sick plants. You can bring in pests, wow. you can bring in weeds, yeah. you can bring in your soil, and we can say, you know, you're doing a good job, you, you know, what, what do you need wow. to do better? So that's that's one of the services that's we have incredible. here. You know. Is there a fee for that, or are there like kind of sliding? There's a soil testing fee, which sure. is minimal, yeah. but, but the other fees, just it's a walk-in service, you can wow. come in, and it's, it's, it's basically free consulting. You pay for it for your taxes. What a great resource center. You hear that, that these are your tax dollars at work. This is really incredible. Like my mind is blown and I'm learning a lot right now. So, and I'm also thinking maybe um, you have a single family home and you have a couple citrus trees. And I, I know one thing that has kind of been going on and you can probably speak to more of this is some of the greening that's been happening um, to citrus trees. So is that other kind of work that your division kind of looks into? Sure, we, we actually have an agent on staff here that works strictly with the citrus industry. Oh, okay. Not great. only, you know, you could be the backyard gardeners would be handled by our master gardener, sure. um, our help desk there. Yeah. But if you if you have any acreage whatsoever and you're selling citrus, the, our commercial citrus agent can assist you with that, wow. that information. Definitely. He has he has uh, he does trade shows. He does uh, orange juice breaks. They call them where there's oh. morning meetings and they bring in the latest topic of interest and they talk to um, growers about uh, the citrus industry, what's going on. He keeps everybody informed. He has newsletters, and we all do some of that. We have classes. We have blogs. We have newsletters. Uh, we Facebook. We you know we do different social media to get our word out to everybody to you know, help them uh, achieve what they want to achieve. That's really incredible. Now, if there were maybe someone was retired or maybe there's a high schooler that wants more community service hours or even a church that's looking to maybe do something in the community, are there opportunities here for uh, people to just get involved and volunteer? There are, yes. Uh, we have internships that oh, we do okay. um, through uh, different high schools, uh, colleges. Uh, with the University of Florida, we have direct internships. Uh, we do uh, volunteering. You can assist with uh, leading 4-H groups with youth. Um, we have uh, master gardener volunteers where they come in and they have to donate so many hours every year sure. in different projects. Uh, some of those projects could be maintaining our beautiful uh, campus here. Oh, okay. uh, it could be working the phones. It can be working the help desk. Uh, it could be doing soil samples, those kinds of things. So we do have opportunities if somebody wants to uh, see what extension it is, come and talk to us and get involved. That's incredible. So oh, that's really good to know. Now, if um, someone either wanted to, what would be the best way for someone to get in touch with you if they wanted just to learn more about horticulture or more about this division? Uh, we have a good web presence okay. um, and, and our blogs and newsletters kind of give you a flavor for what's going on at the sure. moment. And then always, we have an open door policy. Here. Sure. So you're always welcome to walk in and see who's here and talk sure. to us and talk to the reception and get information that way. But 
I would encourage anybody who's interested in one of those segments of, of extension is to find that agent's uh, vehicle of information, sure. whether it's the blog or their newsletters, and sure. sign up for that and, and kind of see what classes are being offered. And we have um, classes also on a calendar, so oh, that you great. can take a look at that as well. Oh, great. So there's classes as well. Now, my last question, just to kind of sum all this up, um, just kind of thinking from um, everyday practicality, just from you and yourself and all the experience that you have, what are maybe two to three pieces of advice you would offer to a household that's looking just to live a more sustainable way, whether it's either just by eating more sustainably or just living in a more sustainable green way? My advice, hmm. well, for me, it's always information. Sure. I always, I always want to find the latest information, and, and it changes on a daily basis. There's always new information oh, on sustainability. So, kind of keeping up with the latest information on sustainability is probably can at least keep you informed, keep you informed on what kind of directions you want to take. Sure. And then number two, act on those things. Sure. You know, it's it's great to have all that information, but then you you've got to make a step and to solve our sustainability issues, uh, we all have to take small actions. And I think collectively, if we all take small actions, that that'll translate into larger Absolutely. movements. Absolutely. Well said. Well, thank you so much for being on this segment, uh, folks. If you want to learn more about what this division of UFIFAS is doing, I'm going to put some information right down here below. And if you don't mind, I'm also going to put your email address as well if folks want to directly get in contact with you to either maybe take a tour here or just connect with you uh, more so in general. But anyway, folks, that's the end of it. Everybody have a great evening and a great day and take care. The Funky Spork is a labor of love a passion project to bring food education to the community at large. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. Your support will mean the world to me. Thank you.